you're tapping into a specific person's like nexus of what is driving them and everyone has one so anyone can relate yeah i agree too so i would much rather talk about other people and talk you know to them and get to know them better right and just like really connect with humans rather than talk about myself <laughs> Okay. It's a balance. It's yeah. a balance. We need both. <laughs> First off, let's let me get your name. What is your name? My name is James Dykstra. How do you spell that? D Y K S T R A. And you are Lana. 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 Helkovich. I have a Helkovich. I have a very Russian last name. D Y K S T R A. Correct. That's yes. a very interesting last name. That's not uh, English, is it? No, it would be I think it's it's Dutch. Okay. Or like Dutch, North German or something. Okay, yeah. but you were raised in the States. Yeah, yeah. You were born States in... States guy. In Georgia? Uh, Virginia. <laughs> oh, also. cool. Yeah. What part? Uh, Alexandria. Okay, yeah. sweet. Um, what a small world, huh? Mm -hmm. And you don't have social media. No. Okay, no, no, okay. No That's media. amazing. <laughs> that is something that I'm striving to as well. Okay. I'm just going to jump right in into the All questions right. that Let's I am wanting to ask. Okay. What is something that you regret happening to you in grade school that you can't stop thinking about? Oh my gosh, in grade school. Um, let's see. I had like a, uh, like a bubble period where I thought life was basically just perfect. And then I think I would have been in around fourth grade. The bubble popped uh, because my, my parents' relationship sort of imploded and that I don't know if I regret it because mm -hmm. this is just like the path of. Hola, buenas tardes. Tienes um, muñete? Sí. Okay, yo quiero un muñete. Ya. Y uh, qué quiero un jugo de piña. Un jugo de piña está bien. Con azúcar, sin azúcar. Sin azúcar. Gracias, por oh. favor. Perdón, perdón. <laughs> Uy, qué torpe. Gracias. Gracias. Okay. Yeah, we'll just put this over here. I could just yeah, clip yeah, this here. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good question. We're just gonna keep going I with like it, it and whatever. Yeah, yeah. This is part of life. It is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. In fourth grade, your bubble burst. Yeah, yeah. The, the bubble burst. Um, so I went. I think that was like the first little nudge from like a blissful childhood to, I guess, that circle the wheel turning where you sort of realize that not everything is perfect and yeah yeah so so mm -hmm. the question was like regrets or regret yeah well i have this this uh i don't know if it's a defense mechanism or just like a sort of taoist perspective where no matter what comes i will try to accept it so it's hard for me to like pinpoint regrets because like i didn't do that it's just something that happened but yeah, yeah. No, I like that answer. Yeah, mad respect. It's not some, like things don't happen to you; they happen for you. Yeah, and you've learned yeah, that you gotta, lesson. It's gonna happen either way. Yeah, in life. So yeah, whatever it is, digest it. So. Who is one person you think about daily? Daily, my brother, who uh, passed away in 2016. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, he would be part of the reason I'm here because we were pretty close growing up. We grew apart, he passed away, and this was another big bubble popping moment for me where, you know, like, mortality is something I'm not going to forget on a daily basis. Um, you know, memento mori, like, there will be an end to life, so you need to make use of it and appreciate it, which is something I used to struggle with and still do even today, like I spent the first half of the, day in, of the day in bed, and here we are in the sacred valley and I'm just sleeping. Um, so I felt a little guilt about that, but you gotta roll with it. Anyways, so, so my brother passed away, so I have this uh, bit of an inner drive to like go more places and see more things, and it's like I carry him with me, a bit of his spirit with me. So I'm like seeing for two and experiencing mm. for two. Oh, that's yeah. special. Older brother? Older brother, yeah. Okay. How old are you? I'm 33 now. 33. And how old would he have been? He, I think he was, this was 2016, so I think he was 27. So yeah, I had that moment where like now I'm older than him. Mm. Yeah. So he was, he's three years older? Three years older, Okay, yeah. so he would have been like 36. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, sending him the love. Oh, thank yeah. You. What is the most painful thing that you have ever been told? Ooh, it could be that. It could be your your brother has passed away. Mm. Um, but that was like a trigger point for like a whole series of familial events. And uh, I think I'm mostly out of the phase of like totally dwelling in like the victimhood of all that. But after that one, there was a, uh, my dad, like I, he just, he doesn't emotionally process things. So they just sit in his body and Sorry, this is gonna maybe it gets a little dark, but it's it's really not dark to me anymore. Um, a couple months later, just like overnight, he became paralyzed. Like he fell <laughs> fell down, and he could no longer walk. Totally related to the previous event. Um, I don't think that was it though. The only other there'd be two contend <laughs> two contenders. I I like the like dichotomy of like this is all sad stuff, but whatever. Um, the other one would be the bubble popping of like, hey, uh, so my dad cheated on my mom. And he just like told me that when I was in fourth grade. Wow. And then just sort of sat there. So it was like a... And since that was the first, maybe that was the most painful. Um, the only other contender would be I have a younger sister. <laughs> and after my brother and my dad, she had like a mental break and... I don't know what if there would be a specific thing, but for me, may, maybe that was the most painful because it was just like I I had to tell myself like she might not come back from this. She did, mm -hmm. yeah. So <laughs> we're getting right to the <laughs> <Okay>. core. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about your first love. Oh, my first love would be the sister of one of my best friends. Her name was Lauren. And I was like my whole entire, this was around when I was 17 or 18. So I still had like this perfectly, like almost sort of childish, unblemished view of, of romance and love. I guess everyone has that, right? Like, so all my hopes and dreams onto this person. And there were many moments of like sheer beauty. Here's a, here's a really happy one. Uh, before we were together together, there was like a courtship phase, I guess, where she would just... Oh. <laughs> um, she would just come over to my house and hang out. Nothing physical, really, just some, some nice tension. And I remember one day after she showed up uh, and left, I just felt like the most pure bliss mm. and I walked outside and it was the golden hour and oh my gosh this sunset was incredible mm. like the whole sky was like pure gold and that was a moment where like my the inner and outer just were one I don't know it's one of those everyone has those moments but like I will never forget it because it was just pure pure beauty and bliss mm. um, obviously we're not together, so life happens. But yeah, it was a good, good first meeting with whatever <laughs> all of that is. And you were—you said you were seventeen. Seventeen. And how yeah. long did it last? Um, it was sort of like a protracted three or four year period. Okay. We would have been together like one and a half of those years. So okay. there was a big build up. She was dating someone else. I'd never dated anyone, and then uh, the timing was never quite right, but. No regrets. So yeah. Nice. yeah, you learned a lesson or two. Oh yeah. What did oh, you yeah, learn that you can um, think of? Uh, you have to be at peace with yourself to be at peace with somebody else. I guess. Mm. At the time, I I don't think I was. So I was putting a lot on her, and also um, uh, I don't know what the opposite of that is. Taking a lot. Mm -hmm. So it it wasn't like a mature relationship mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was a lot of ideals that mm -hmm. i was just projecting onto mm -hmm. that person and probably vice versa mm -hmm. but that how else can you learn but like on a castle of mistakes right so, exactly yeah you need to experience it to learn right yeah. okay that was very sweet thank you for sharing that what are you most proud of Ooh, i i would say like i was alluding to before I, I really reflect, I can't help but reflect on everything. Um, and sometimes that forces you to 
look at where you're at and make like a hard out. And there was a big time where I was just totally going through the motions like, okay, I've graduated, I need a job, I need to make money. And that's all well in the past and I've not, uh, not given in to, I guess, the the easy route of like just doing the thing that gives you security like i've at this moment i'm pretty much totally pushing security aside i have no insurance mm -hmm. my income is not huge but that is because i'm trying to do the things that really speak to the deeper parts of myself and as you well know i'm sure that's it's not always an easy path like it's going to bring up every difficult Thing, like yeah. everything that needs to be shaved down yeah. um, so that's a daily daily process but I don't know once you've seen that that path it's hard to turn away I've turned away in the past uh, but I don't think it's gonna happen again and for me I still am working on figuring out exactly what that those actions are that will be that path but a big thread is uh, trying to take whatever I've experienced and share it with uh, usually a younger person. I, I teach drums occasionally mm -hmm. and I use that as like a as inroad to being a therapist without having to go to school because mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to go back to school. Life is school. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I've, I've taught drums and this summer uh, the shape that took was leading a group of teenagers on a cross-country bike trip from Oregon to Coney Island. Wow. And it was the same thing, just in a different form of like, life is the teacher, and whatever comes up, you deal with it. Um, and I, yeah, I felt very at peace doing that. Uh, so I'm proud of, of not giving in to those things and trying to take whatever ball of experience I have and put it back out into something beautiful. Although that's not always easy. Yeah, wow, that's fucking awesome. So just to um, go back a little bit, you took a group of teenagers from cross country on bicycles. Yes, yeah. How long did that take? Uh, 53 days it took. Wow. Yeah, it was incredible. And I mean, Did I'm you guys 33. camp? Yep, okay. we, we would stay at like one hotel a week. The rest was camping and cooking and like buying our own food so there was no like truck behind us it was just teenagers and me you were the only adult there was one other adult she was 21. oh my god uh, it was awesome it was so cool i bet that sounds really really dope yeah what a huge accomplishment yeah, it was it was great and it was extra therapeutic for me because prior to this in 2020 i tried to bike across the country by myself and I didn't make it. So like a huge lesson, you need others, of mm -hmm. course, to, to keep you on the path. And to kind of motivate each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. no, I don't think anyone can like, well, that's not true. I'm sure someone can. But it's difficult to always keep that like drive. There's going to be a point where you want to quit. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when I did it by myself, that first moment that I was really, really tested is when I, I quit. But wow. How did you get the parents to agree? They all signed up for it. Like these were some motivated kids, like Incredible. high achievers. This was through an organization called Teen Treks. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I just found this opportunity to be the guy leading it. They had already signed up and so paid to do this. Oh, okay. So, yeah, these, I got to talk about these kids. One of them was, uh, he had a six-year running streak where every day, even when he had COVID, he would wake up at like four in the morning and run at least a mile. Um, he was training to do ultra marathons and whatnot. How old is this kid? Uh, he would have been 17. Wow. Um, and all of these kids were like, they had some super, like, diamond drive within them it was incredible uh -huh. so really i was the one like learning from them i bet so cool how big was the group of kids it started at 10 but some of them had signed up to not do the full thing so they would drop off along the uh -huh. way no one quit and six did the full i think it ended up being like 3500 miles in 53 days. So that six students completed. Yes. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And then they like flew back from yeah. Coney Island. Uh-huh. Incredible. 
that's a huge accomplishment. Like, wow. So, yeah, that super was cool. Awesome. Super, super cool. Thank you for sharing that. Of course. Um, yeah, I would be proud of that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is your favorite memory to think back on? Oh my gosh. I've, I've written this out before. I have like a, a small catalog of those golden moments that, like the one with the sunset and the first love. And I don't know, some of them are maybe a little egoistic. I used to play baseball and I was, I was only like seven, but it was I, I, maybe like my first, like I felt like a uh, real ego triumph because I had a, a baseball game where I hit three home runs in a row. <laughs> and you know, this was probably a field like not much bigger than this enclosed space. But to me, I, I felt like superhuman. So I, the question was like moments I, I felt really happy. Or... What is your favorite memory to think back on? Oh gosh. Yeah, I always struggled oh, to. Like a straw? Oh. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. I'm in that, that self-conscious state where like suddenly easy things become difficult. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, in that, I'm in that stage of my life too. Uh, my dad's parents, my grandparents lived in Cape Cod. They were beautiful, super kind people. They had this little cottage on a pond that overlooked the pond. So we would go there every summer when I was really young. And it was just one of those places that was like an oasis of peace and love so I can always go back to that place and time and recognize that like oh, yeah, I felt total bliss there um, of course moments with uh, lovers <laughs> uh, can occasionally get there um, or friends I have a nice group of friends that we've gotten older so most of them are married I don't see them as much but just moments where we're all together engaged in some activity like there was one I was maybe 13 I remember going to bed I felt like the next morning was Christmas just so excited because we were gonna play paintball at this construction mm -hmm. site and it was just like a a playground for a young teenager mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what the common thread is there a bit of peace a bit of excitement and like full engagement mm. with life. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Just feel super alive because yeah. you know it's going to hurt when you get hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you share a time when you were really glad you followed your intuition mm. and what the outcome was? Oh my gosh. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is uh, related to my first bike trek. Uh, this so this was 2020 COVID. Uh, I was working at home remotely writing this really, it felt incredibly meaningless, like trite, glorified clickbait sort of writing. And I was doing this 40 hours a week, just wake up, grab the computer, write. So, there was a day I didn't even get out of bed. So like I was not, I didn't feel like I was living and I was having a huge internal struggle with this. So the result was... I have a friend who lives off the west coast on San Juan Island and he had a long series of events that brought him there and totally changed the course of his life but he began uh, working as like a kayak guide so every day he's seeing whales, orcas and just living in this paradise and that woke me up to thinking like why am I just sitting here writing when I could be traveling, right? So I went there and I, I packed up my bicycle, like considering this uh, bike trek. And I remember before I left, I hadn't quit my job and I was looking out the window while I'm writing this clickbait and like there's whales going by and I'm like, why, why am I looking at the computer when <laughs> life is out there? So there was a moment where I finally, I set out from the island to try to get back to Atlanta. So like opposite sides of the country. Um, and I remember first like it, it was about 60 or 70 miles just to get to the mainland and then I got on the mainland and uh, it's like a classic movie moment of like the wind is blowing and I just felt totally free in mm. that moment. Yeah, I can envision um, that. Yeah, and everything since then has been following that sort of thread. So I forget exactly what the question was, but like following the intuition mm -hmm. 
that's everything I've done since 2020 has basically been that, like trying to figure out what's going on in there and stick with that. And although it's put me in some odd places and certainly not in the secure place, I know I feel no regret about it at all. So awesome. Yeah. Do you consider yourself to be awakened? And what does that mean for you? Hmm, hmm. I still will compare myself to others. So maybe relatively to like the large swath of people who seem to just seek out security before anything. But no, it compared to the smaller percentage of people who are really out there actively seeking. Maybe that is like a overly judgmental way of looking at it. Uh, I'd say like uh, 55 to 60% maybe. Okay, that was the first part of the question. What was the second part? What does awakened mean for you? Oh. Maybe if you answered that, it mm. will be easier to answer if you feel like you're, or if you consider yourself to be awakened. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna go on a slight tangent here. I have a real fascination with uh, the how the brain works. Mm -hmm. So there's this book written by a neuroscientist who talks about brain hemispheres. And so to try to sum it up as quickly as possible, uh, it's not going to work, but the left hemisphere, there's like a pop science version of this, but um, think of like a rabbit. It has two main drives and goals. One, it needs to find food, which is like the small part of the the eye that picks out the exact detail and focuses on that one thing so it needs to like look and find what it needs and consume it and then there's the other part of the rabbit's psyche which is it needs to pay attention to the big picture so it doesn't get eaten so there's like the holistic perspective and the fine grain like selfish perspective um, so I think ideally in life if you are awakened, you would be really living in that holistic picture where you're seeing everything mm -hmm. uh, in relation to yourself rather than you're just looking for the bit of seed on the ground that's going to get you through the day. Uh, okay, okay, I need some I like that breakdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, trying to keep the bigger perspective, which includes like mortality why are we here remembering that like life is more than just getting the sweet beverage and everything exactly as you want it uh, okay here's one thing I like that maybe we'll sum it up uh, I want to try to like live many li lives in this life uh, and every life you need to sort of like die into yourself to be reborn so I want to live many lives in this life so when the real death comes there's no like it's not a death like a sad thing it's a celebration yeah um i don't know if that answers the question that does okay. yeah i totally resonate with that for yeah. sure and perhaps maybe it's uh it's not so much living in that as much as it is having that awareness mm. of of that right and then constantly yes. having that in the back of your head to come back to yeah yeah, yeah. because it, it pains me, but there's like, to always have that perspective, I, I feel like you would have to transcend some barrier. Though. Right. <laughs> You'd need a different body and probably not on planet Earth. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. too much distraction <laughs> on here. If you had to talk for 15 minutes straight on stage mm. about anything, what would you choose to share with your audience? Mm. That's a great question. Thanks. Very good. Um, well, my thought process for choosing it would be like, it has to be something very important to me. And one of the biggest all-encompassing um, concepts that excites me and motivates me is this idea of looking at life through this ho more holistic lens. Um, and of course, you hear holistic and you think like herbal remedies and stuff, but holistic in the sense of the trying to see everything not as like it dualistically but just how it relates and mm -hmm. how you can encompass that into your life so here's a really fun concept i like uh, there's a, this tiny book 
written by this religious scholar. It's called Finite and Infinite Games. It's a really simple concept, and the book is just like defining what that is. So an infinite game, a finite game is like win or lose. Uh, there is a winner or loser, um, bad or good, right or wrong. An infinite game would be something you're you are trying to something that can be totally inclusive um, mm, I should I should have a better uh, definition of this but anyways so I'm try I want to look at life as an infinite game I think ideally everyone does and anyone can find their own infinite game a finite game would be like I need to get you to do this thing so I can have this. Mm -hmm. An infinite game would be like how can we blend everything we have together to continue the game. And I think it's as simple as that. So in an infinite game mindset, literally anything in life feeds you. Like it's not simply monetary, it can be spiritual. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the mindset of that bad or good, come what may. This is part of the game of mm -hmm. life. That, that concept just really excites me because one of the classic struggles of becoming an adult is like, uh, how do I win the game? You know, like, how do I get by? But maybe the game isn't like meant to be won like that. It's just meant to continue being played. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one of the guys definitions of an infinite game it's not about winning or losing it's it's about keeping the game going enjoying the journey exactly mm -hmm. yeah. this is what you would choose to share with your audience yeah and i would try to point them to a way to look at life and find their own version of that i felt so excited about my cross-country bike trek with the teens because it felt very infinite beyond the finite goal of getting from a to b like there, there was no itinerary, like, mm -hmm. so anything could have happened, and everything that did happen was part of that. So, and, you know, there were many moments of discomfort and relative danger uh, that people would generally avoid. Like, mm -hmm. that's a losing game you're playing. You might mm -hmm. get hit by a car. Mm -hmm. um, but not in the infinite game mindset. Mm -hmm. So that's... I bet that was one hell of an experience, though, oh, like seeing so much on the road in 53 days. Yes. Yeah, and just like yeah. so many lessons I bet were coming up. So many. And then there's this, uh, I'm sure you've had a version of this, like that was a peak experience. And then I came back into like this huge trough afterwards. Mm -hmm. So classic dichotomy of life, like yeah. the higher the high, the lower yeah. the low. Yeah, when you're high, you're high, right? Yeah. But then when that high ends, you're like, fuck. Right, <laughs> right. And, like, you know, I'll never forget that achievement because even on paper, it's a, an achievement. But, like, the struggle was, like, it was, I didn't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it's the same for someone maybe who walks the Appalachian Trail mm -hmm. or takes a very strong psychedelic or something mm -hmm. like how do you integrate it i guess mm -hmm. is the way i'm saying totally it. okay and last question okay are you happy yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and there would have been a big period of time where i would have said no and in that period many many things about my life were far more secure and comfortable but i think part of happiness is uh, I don't know, we're not here just to to find the easy way. There's more to it. So I, when I feel like I'm riding on that edge, for me, playing the more infinite game, uh, I can't not feel happy even when I'm suffering somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am happy. I love that answer. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for your time. What do you do for work? Uh, a couple things, and I sort of shift them around. Right now, my main thing is uh, I write for a video game company's marketing efforts, so they sell things, and I found this job by searching poetry online, so my first thing was like writing poems for their products. Oh, so cool. Yeah, so I do that. For a long time, I was an editor of a beer magazine, so I still have like a slight freelance tied to that. I do that a little bit. Um, when I'm located in one place, I will teach drums. Mm -hmm. And this summer, I'll probably do another bike trip. 
Okay. Uh, so there's like that teaching thread, but my real bread and butter uh, is writing. Like writing, you can manipulate words like water. Like they mm -hmm. can take take any form. So I don't know what kind of writer I am. I'm just a guy who grew up around, surrounded by words. So mm -hmm. I feel like I can manipulate them. Okay. And my last struggle with that is how to make it a bit more infinite like you're doing where you're out here living, you're encountering whatever you encounter and you are turning it into something you can push back out there rather than thinking like, okay, I need content, 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 and it needs to be cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th this is my current little struggle is like how to more individualize and expand writing from like, okay, I have something I need to write mm -hmm. to like, I have something I need to share, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It takes time. Yeah. To really zone in on that. Uh, like I said, for me, I think what I started asking myself was like, what comes easy for me? Mm. Right. And maybe already you figured that out, right? Writing comes easy for you. And now it's like, how do I turn that into something that I get paid for without me having to really like focus on the money part? Yeah. yeah that's a process.